Valls. Victor ended up finished tied for second in the conference with seven assists. Victor Valls has been terrific, and he's the X factor here today for Radford. If Severt Dolly and Kieran Roberts can get it going, we expect Victor Valls to be one of those players that could find the back of the net. And we are underway, the semifinals here. On a very, like I said, rainy and cold night, temperatures will fall down below 40 degrees before the night is said and done. We're getting underway at the temps here in the New River Valley for this semifinal tip is at 42 degrees. Radford in the home whites with the red numbers and letters and Presbyterian wearing the royal blue road uniforms with the white numbers and letters. Islanders trying to get it in early and they're going to have an opportunity. The ball bounding around, slipping in goal was barren. And the ball will sell out of bounds. And that's going to be a factor. It rained basically from the morning to the afternoon, and it's been drizzling since about 5 o'clock here in the New River Valley. How will those field conditions play? Not necessarily the drizzle bothering the players that's falling, but this field has taken up a lot of moisture throughout the course of the last 24 hours. Here's Dolly with a pass to Roberts. Roberts, the attacking player of the year in the Big South Conference, and rightfully so. This ball is sent in but picked up by Barron. Highlanders received lots of honors in the postseason with their individual players. As Kieran ended up second in the nation in goals through the regular season. Now, postseason goals do count. Mama Du Girase, the NJIT player, still leads the nation with 16 talents. Here comes Presbyterian from right to left as they work against the Highlanders. PC has kind of had Radford's number, if you will, not necessarily being able to beat Radford, but just a lot of close matches. As a matter of fact, earlier this season, on October the 4th, there was a tie. One to one was the final. Silver Dolly had the Radford goal. Sergio Pinto scored the goal for the Blue Hose. Radford led in shots 16 to 11 down in Clinton and shots on goal 11 to 6. Presbyterian incidentally they were out shot in their last outing against Campbell 15 to 12 but found a way to win 2 to 1. So the second straight season the Blue Oaks have won in the corners as a lower seed. As the ball will dribble in and Mertzikot will make the pickup. We'll keep an eye on the footing of the goalkeepers. That could be a, a big part of today's game as well. We expect it to be low scoring. Not a lot separates these two teams, seems like, when they play. Last year at Cup, it was a game in which Presbyterian really, I think, surprised Radford at the time with the way they came in and, and played the Highlanders. As Radford was able to come away with a victory in overtime, but... It was very hard fought, and of course, it took a shootout before Radford could get away from the Blue Hose in last year's semis. Here's Miles York in the middle of the field. Radford from left to right. Strand Sodder's going to play it back to Walsh. Week to prepare. You get ready to go, and you lay it all on the line. It's the postseason, after all. Here's a pass sent in for Dolly that's booted out of there beyond the PC bench. So Radford will have a throw in over on the far sideline. Early moments here, the semifinals. The winners will advance to the championship game, two o'clock on Sunday. If Radford's able to win and High Point is upset in their semifinal, the game would be here at Cup Stadium. Radford wins and High Point wins. Well, the championship will be down in High Point, North Carolina. Big South Commissioner Kyle Kalander is going to join me in about 10 minutes. We'll find out the state of the league. A lot of things going on, obviously. The volleyball championships will be here in Radford as well. A whistle and a foul going to be called, our first. And it'll go against PC. And Vols will play it back to York. Neither one of these teams make a point out of creating too many fouls. They're Play it fairly cleanly. Here's a ball bounding around, sent in, and PC trying to get it right out of the box, and the Highlanders are going to play it back, and already High Point has a goal against Liberty down the road in High Point, North Carolina. So the number one seed off to a good start ahead 1-0. Noida Bull 
Plays it for Rad. Remember the all freshman team in the Big South Conference. Radford across the way as the drizzle continues to fall, and PC is able to come in in a sliding grab by. Barron, who's from St. Simons Island, Georgia, had a 108 goals against average. Barron, a 6-6 and 3 record, made 57 saves, a 770 save percentage. He was fourth in the conference in goals against average, third in save percentage, and fourth in shutouts. Now, not an easy guy to get the ball behind if you're Radford. Cardo Hernandez and Kellen O'Hare each scored their first career goals in the win in the quarters for PC. They're 2-1-1 one, one all time in the Big South Conference Tournament. Radford, of course, a lot of success. Four-time Big South Tournament champions. Latest one came last year, four NCAA appearances. Radford won or shared the Big South regular season title in three of the last four years. Of course, High Point won it outright this season. PC trying to control some possession here. Only one shot, and that ball went down. And they tried to find Clément Veni, and just a little bit too far out of his reach. The freshman has a knack, a lot like Radford Silver Dolly, of just hanging around the net, and he can score in many different fashions. So the Highlanders have to be aware, number 27, wearing the road royal blue. Late arriving crowd, but some folks starting to check out the semifinal here tonight inside of Cup Stadium. Radford 5-1-1 one one at Cup this season. And PC, a very impressive winning road record. They were 4-3-2 away from Clinton. Here's Strand Sodder. Ball sent down to Kieran Roberts. Here's Walsh with a turn. Walsh with a centering pass. He's got Dolly in the middle. Strandsodder comes in, and the ball is cleared away. Nearly an opportunity there for the Highlanders, but he was quickly turned aside. Highlanders on the attack. Sklenic centers it away, and it's just beyond the reach of Barron. Radford, though, keeping it down in the scoring zone. Ball is going to be played back. Strand Sodder with it. Jakob's going to send it in. Dolly with the header. Ball is deflected out to the right. You see, just trying to get it out of there to get some of the pressure off, and they boot it out of bounds, and it'll be Radford's possession. And the Blue Hose lost one nothing to Radford overtime in Cup last year. They landed three players on the all-freshman Big South Conference team, by the way. Jonathan Potter, again, in his second year, as here comes a run out now as Vanique takes it in and gets clogged up by the Radford defense. This is a program that in 2014 and 15 was 130 and 1, talking about Presbyterian. And all Coach Potter has done, he got him seven wins last year, which was the third biggest turnaround in the entire nation. And with six wins this year, 13 wins over the last two seasons when they had one combined over two years before that. Here's a ball that's sent in and sent away and picked up by Barron. No score. Radford with the only shot thus far. Nearly nine minutes have gone by. Barron wearing the black goalie attire and Merzikot with his Yellow jersey for Radford. Here's Pinto. Sergio Pinto, good player for Presbyterian. He has been over the years. Second team, all Big South Conference. Scored their goal against Radford down in Clinton during the regular season, by the way. Three goals, four assists for Pinto this season. Patience a big factor in the postseason. This is where one bad bounce and a bad possession can cost you your entire year. And Radford very aware of that. Strand Sodder plays it back. Here's Erzin to Dolly. Now a quick pass. Roberts trying to get a turn. Charging in, and the ball deflected 
out to the right. Sklenic came in, couldn't quite get it squared up, and now a corner kick for Radford, their first, and the first of the match. So here we go with Strandsauter heading to the upper right. So a corner kick, the first set piece here in the semifinal. The bender is sent in. Radford keeping some pressure on. The PC is going to send it back down the pitch. So Radford dominated possession thus far in this opening 45. Ball just kind of died there. Radford beat them to the punch, and this ball sent in and sent over the net to the left. A little bit of a lazy play defensively by Presbyterian as Garrett Glaze just kind of allowed Sklenic to take that ball. And those are the kind of things that can cost you here in a postseason. We're going to see Sklenic get in there. A little surprised he had the opportunity, and that shot not bad at all, just a little off to the left. So still no score. Third official shot for Radford as Barron puts it back into play for the Blue Hosts. Radford, a five-match unbeaten streak coming in. They've scored eight goals during that time. Four first-team members on the All-Big South Conference team, two on the second team, two players on the All-Freshman team. They have the Attacking Player of the Year, Co-Defensive Player of the Year, and the Scholar Athlete of the Year. Here's Walsh now taking it away. Sending it across, but nothing but Royal Blue in the way. It's the third consecutive season, by the way, that Radford has won or shared Defensive Player of the Year in the Big South. Just an incredible streak. Here's Erzin. Now Strand Sodder. Going to send it down, trying to spot Dolly, and he's unable to find him. Dolly finished the season with 12 goals, second to Kieran's 15 in the Big South Conference. So that's been a nice one-two punch for Radford. Those two guys, by the way, scored 27 of the 38 goals for the Highlanders this season. Ball sent down and PC. Trying to, again, get some possession here. We have a whistle and a foul going to be called here against Radford. So a free kick here for Presbyterian. Always a very dangerous time here when you uh, get a free kick right in front of your net just about 20 feet beyond the box. As I talked about him a little while ago, always one of our favorite guests, Mr. Kyle Kalander, the commissioner of the Big South Conference, joining me here on a very rainy, chilly semifinal Wednesday. How you doing, Kyle? Well, you know what? I'm doing great. Some of my most favorite Soccer championship memories are from right here in Cup Stadium. <laughs> you were saying it's a warm night, yeah, right? Yeah, and you know what? It's balmy <laughs> tonight compared to some of those other experiences. It is. It's wonderful. It's always a pleasure to be here and always a pleasure to to be out and witness our student athletes at the championships. It's one of the favorite parts of my job. Now, I was going to say, I, all the things you get to do when it gets to this time of year, no matter what sport it is, it just becomes a little more amped up, doesn't it? Oh, it really does. It really does. And you know, you see that with some of the reports and things that come through the office, you know, that kind of part of it. But it's uh, it's so exciting and so intense and, you know, means so much when, you, when you've got a, got a chance to go to the NCAA tournament and win the, win the conference championship, lift the hardware. You know, so it's uh, it's always great. We had women's soccer, of course, last yep, weekend down, right. down in Greensboro and had a great match down there between High Point and Longwood. And, Men soccer this week, volleyball back up here at Radford next weekend, <laughs> and not to mention a few trips to football games in between. I was going to say, and we got basketball starting on yeah, Friday. Yeah, yeah. So it's a great time of year. Well, I thought at basketball media day, I really liked what your your state of college athletics speech. I thought that was well done. So congratulations on that. I think a lot of great points were brought up. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. You know, I think we're really at a crossroads in men's basketball no right doubt. now with with everything that's going on out there. And in fact, I was just talking to Robert Lindenberg, of course, the AD here. Um, about this very thing. Of course, he's you know from the basketball world, mm -hmm. being a former basketball coach, and and it's an opportunity. It's it's an opportunity for us to uh, really try to take hold of some of the things we've been concerned about in, in basketball, and and uh, you know if we don't take advantage of this opportunity we have right now, then uh, then we really have problems. So it's gonna be interesting to see. Do we have the courage uh, to to take some bold steps to really take advantage of uh, of the situation right now? 
and I'm not sure what all the answers are. I offered a few ideas, and, right. and a lot of those weren't new necessarily, but, you know, we've got to address the, the summer recruiting issue. We've got to address uh, the the agent issue. We've got to try to work with the NBA to, to work on no the, the access to the draft and, and when that happens, um, you know, and again, if we don't do it, then, then we really got, got some, some trouble. First really contained possession here for Presbyterian. They've got some numbers from right to left, and the ball is going to deflect off of the bull, and Radford will start the other way. Well, I think your point, though, is well taken. It's going to take courage by the conferences. It has to start the conference level. Everybody get on board and tie these conversations and say, okay, now mm -hmm. we've got enough momentum to make these changes. Like you said, yeah. it's vastly overdue in basketball. Well, you know, the NCAA has put together an independent commission, you know, led by Condoleezza Rice, and, and a lot of people are looking at that and saying, is that just a PR stunt? Is, that, is there really something behind that? And, and – I don't know Condi Rice yeah. um, personally, but everything I've heard from her, she, she wouldn't be involved in something if it was just for exactly. PR purposes. No, 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 not at all. So so I think it's serious. We met with Mark Emmert uh, last week at our commissioner's meeting um, up in Chicago, and you know, he made it very clear that this group is, is going to be very independent. They want to be independent. They don't want to be under the auspices of the NCAA or – uh, or anybody, uh, they want to come to their own conclusions. Now, I think it's really important that they you know, hear from a lot of the people in the trenches, a lot of people that are, you know, involved in what's uh, what's going on in basketball right now. And I hope they do that and take advantage of that and, and come out with some uh, with some real strong, bold recommendations. Now, I, I think they do need to make sure whatever they come out with is is workable and doable, and they get the right advice right. in that regard. But at the same time, you know, they're. It calls for some independent thinking and some creative thinking. So um, I'm encouraged by that. Well, the last time I heard conversations like this, it was kind of more akin to what I do, the broadcasting and getting the exposure out with the networks and what we're doing at each school, trying to make the, the quality of these broadcasts. And we were, you know, the conference as a whole, led by yourself mm -hmm. and Mark, mm -hmm. you guys are kind of at the forefront of getting all that turned around. Exposure for conferences out of size is now Robert's, sends one in but it's deflected out and will go the other way so the last time you started this kind of uh, <laughs> uh agenda things got done so i'm hoping that's the same this time well yeah we're excited about what we've been able to accomplish with big south network and the rest of our media exposure and and um you know we're trying to take some steps now supporting our institutions to uh really create uh, institutional productions and production uh groups on each campus that uh can independently put together uh Productions not only uh, good for Big South Network, but that can air on ESPN3 and can be aired locally. You know, and that's the direction everything's going. You know, yes. it's really it's yes. really interesting because, uh, especially right now, we've got uh, what a year and a half left on our ESPN contract. So uh, we're going to go into renegotiations next summer, and, and so we're already beginning to talk about what does that look like, what does that mean, what is our strategy, how does that relate to the Big South Network, how does that relate to other over-the-top options, how does that relate to uh, regional television. So, you know, we want to make sure we have a strategy and as much as possible can uh, can kind of, I don't know, can predict what's going to happen in the future, but be prepared for it. Right, and, right. Uh, and that our our ESPN relationship, if that's the direction we continue to go, um, you know, reflects that. Islanders with four shots, and right now Presbyterian is still looking for their first as we're hitting the 26-and-a-half-minute mark. Still no score here in the semifinals. Radford and PC, the number two and the number six seed. High Point has a goal. They're up 1-0 over Liberty down the road. In High Point, North Carolina, of course, the Panthers, the top seed, the regular season champs, really turned it on the final month and a half of the season playing terrific soccer as this ball will head out and Radford will have a throw in. Well, with basketball season started, football getting ready to wind down. Uh, you know, hoop season in the conference, one of my favorite times of year when we turn that calendar over toward the end of December and in January. And I don't think I've ever seen, talking to all the coaches down at Media Day, the league be as balanced as it's been in a number of years. I mean, it's it's crazy really how any night you don't know what could happen in this league. And that's not just a cliche. You really feel that way. No, no, that's exactly right. And, and what what's different, I think, now is at the level that they're playing. It's not just that it, there's parity. They're, mm -hmm. they're playing at a high level. And, uh, you know, a couple things that – that kind of go into that. Number one, as you know, we put together a strategic plan a couple of years ago that really emphasized basketball, success in basketball. And I think certainly we're seeing the trends in a positive direction in that no way. Doubt. You know, last no year with, with Rintup getting a, a 13 seed was a big shot there on the left side. Went wide. And Highlanders have control possession. They've kept the pressure on, but Nabul missed it from the 
his left and to the right of the goalkeeper, Barron, and he'll play it back in for Presbyterian. Yeah, but so last season, I think, you know, really, really saw some of the initial results of what we're trying to do with basketball and with our plan. Uh, you know, and, and I think the next piece you know, is the fact that we were able to retain, uh, you know, all of our great players coming back. You know, transfers in, in basketball right now is a significant issue. We have over 800 mm. uh, players transferring last year, which is, you know, I think 40% of of Division One rosters contain transfers. And, and, you know, some of that's, uh, you know, fine, great. You know, people transfer for, for good reasons, whether it's academically or otherwise. Um, you know, but I, I think it really uh, is a challenge to, especially programs like ours where you identify and develop really good young talent. Uh, you have them for a year or two and then they're off. And, and also the graduate transfer issue, which is uh, which I'm really disappointed in because initially that was a, a great idea to be able to allow student athletes to go get a graduate degree and finish up their eligibility. But, you know, it's being abused now. It uh, is. You it know, is. student athletes, not, not everybody obviously, but um, – you know, more often than not, it seems, are just going to uh, finish their eligibility, and they're not uh, they're not serious about getting a graduate degree. So, so those are the kind of things we need to think about. But but we were able to keep the Maceo Teagues and the Ed Polites and the um, uh, you know the the Chris Clemens and the Xavier Cooks right, and right. and so you know we've got a we've got a great opportunity this year with some great student athletes coming back and really pleased at how we were able to retain our our top talent. So I'm I'm looking for a great year. Uh, this year in basketball. Well, it was very frustrating because for about a five-year period, it felt like the Big South was among lots of leagues. It just felt like a minor league developing these right. players, and then the big boys said, oh, hey, yeah, we, <laughs> we could probably use him in some capacity. So it's nice to see that settling down a little bit. Well, in, in the war rooms on campuses these days, uh, on, the, on, the, on the big boards, not only do coaches have high school prospects, but they've got college prospects. Yes. You know, those yes. that they, when they think they want to recruit, they think are available, those that they are – looking to graduate and still have a year left in their eligibility. So that's that's really disappointing. That's not what we're all about. So um, I'm hopeful that uh, uh, that on the transfer side of things, because there's a transfer working group currently looking at, at that um, that side of things, that we can come up with some some uh, some guidelines and some rules that will, will help that a little bit. And really put the intent of the, certainly of the graduate transfer uh, yes. back to what it's, it should be. And, uh, and also provide some you know, meaningful reform in the undergraduate transfer space. Well, redirection can be a good thing. Where are you headed next after tonight, my friend? Heading to Kennesaw, Georgia yeah. on Saturday for a little football. Charleston Southern's playing uh, playing Kennesaw. Kennesaw's uh, uh, tied for the lead right now, along with Monmouth, two of our associate members leading uh, Big South football right now, which is interesting. But that just tells us we uh, we identified and recruited the right uh, right. You got the right guys in the league to come into the <laughs> league. So uh, th they're playing well. They both have a chance to get in the playoffs, the FCS uh. playoffs this year, uh, which is exciting. And Charleston Southern's right behind them, so that'll be a good good game between Charleston Southern and Kennesaw on Saturday. And then uh, then they'll be back up here for volleyball the following weekend. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. As Radford's hosting this season, it's going to be very very tight. Again, top six teams are in and. It's going to be a lot of fun between uh, Radford and whoever comes their way. High point, of course, undefeated in the conference. Yeah. I mean, to do that in a regular season almost seems impossible nowadays. That's remarkable. But they, they've got a big match they on Saturday. They got one on Saturday. Think, but so. to be 15-0 and at this point yeah, is no just mind-blowing. No question. That was a, <laughs> a tremendous season for them. And, and, but Radford's had a great season. They have. The way you came out of the blocks and beat all those. Uh, Dolly hit oh. the post. He won't have a more wide-open shot. Are you kidding me? Silver Dolly had a wide open look unchecked about 10 feet away. Corner kick coming, but Radford lets an opportunity get by there as Barron was exposed and the shot hit the post and we remain scoreless as now Frazier Comer, he's the best at this on Radford's roster, going to send in the bender and the header attempt. Not quite out of the zone yet. Radford trying to keep the pressure on with a deflection, and now it's sent out. Well, you almost got us our first goal tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I try not to be too, uh, you know, beneficial to anyone, <laughs> any one particular <laughs> side. You know, I'm, I'm wearing my green and my brown today. I'm, you know, neutral. You are neutral. <laughs> yes, you are. Look at that shot hit the post right there from Dolly. Well, sometimes the post is unkind. Yep. Well, Kyle, listen, thank you very much for taking the time as always. Hey, we'd like to have you again during Volleyball Week at some point if you're up here and you have some time. Absolutely. Love to do it. All right. Great, thanks great for to talk to you. Thanks. Congratulations thanks for all on all you. Work. Well, thanks for all your good work and being such a stout leader in our conference. We appreciate it a lot. 
My pleasure. All right, that's the commissioner of the Big South Conference, Kyle Kalander, joining us here as the Highlanders near miss there as we remain scoreless in semifinal action here in the New River Valley. And we appreciate Kyle spending some time with us, as always. And you hear his ideas, and I think he echoes what a lot of people hope happen in college athletics, especially in college basketball. A lot of things have to settle down. So the Highlanders, back-to-match action here, won't have a better opportunity than the one they just had unless they can score a goal because Sivert Daly, who will put those away, nine out of ten times hit the post. And we remain scoreless at the 1930 mark. As now Radford has to regroup. Six shots to none. So the Radford Highlanders, a near miss early. And sometimes that will give the lower seed a new sign of life as well. So we have no score at the 1855 mark. And we nearly had our first goal of the night right here. High Point, I mentioned they're on the board 1-0 right now over Liberty down the road in High Point, North Carolina. So at the 1840 mark, Radford trying to reload. They've really dominated the possession. The, the entire half seemingly has been played over on PC's end of things. As here's a pass headed down to Strand Sodder, and it's run down by Luca Ziegler. He's a freshman from Germany. So both these teams have a lot of key pieces that are upperclassmen and a lot of younger players as well. 15 freshmen on the Presbyterian College roster. And, you know, Coach Potter went in there and just found a mess. And he has just, in a short amount of time, it's been sensational how not only the wins that he's been able to achieve, but how competitive they are night in and night out in the conference. They have a lot of low scoring, one goal games, either in their favor or against them, a lot of overtimes. I mean, they're used to playing tight games, and that's something else that can really benefit you come tournament time. And, Sometimes when you have that bye, you come out a little sluggish, and sometimes when you've played a playoff match already, as Presbyterian has, that can be very advantageous because now you're game fresh and you're ready to go, whereas Radford has to kind of pick it up after a week off and practice off. But for PC, as well as they play defense, you saw the breakdown. Radford just couldn't convert. Their lack of offensive opportunities could come back to hurt them. Mention they got outshot in their win against Campbell. And Dolly's going to be called for a trip. It was inadvertent. No score. The Highlanders here at home. Five wins this year, and we have a Highlander down across the way. Let's see if this is an actual injury or a cramp. Is that double? Is that Noy? I can't tell. Is it Victor? I think it's Noy the Bull. And I didn't see what happened across the way, but he's being checked on by the trainers. Maybe we can get a sight of this at the 1636 mark. And you hate to see this, obviously, but you don't know field conditions. Did his legs just slip out from under him? Was he bumped into? Presbyterian went over to check on him, which was really nice. And it looks like he's having some trouble with his right leg as he's trying to limp off. And there you see some good sportsmanship there from PC. Pinto goes over to pat him on the shoulder. That's nicely done here. Hey, it's the postseason. These kids are competitors. And there you see the bull. He's going to head out. Okay, let's see this again. We might have a view of it. And there you see 
the bull backing up and then he just kind of goes down yeah something collapsed yeah he looked like he was a little upset before he hit Game clock running once again, and Radford from left to right. Mertzikot. Plays that over here to York. And now here's Walsh for Radford. Still no score. Six shots for Radford, none for PC. And we'll keep an eye on DeBull and find out what's going on with him. Is That's a huge loss potentially for Radford. Martirana showing some speed on the baseline. Keeps it going. Centers it right into the goalie's arms. Barron. So, again, Radford keeping the possession. As the Highlanders, they might lead it in the shot scoreboard. But still zeros. As here comes Presbyterian now trying to maintain some possession. Here's Pinto. He's going to play it off to the left side. Zavanovic centering pass is deflected away. Radford's defense has been the story. They're not allowing PC to keep the ball on their toes very long at all. Collision at midfield. And the ball goes out of bounds across the way. Fourteen forty-five to go, and we have no score. Good news so far, too, is the field conditions don't seem to be necessarily bothering the play. Edo Martin with it for PC. Now here's Strandsodder. He's going to turn it down. Here come the Highlanders. Vols with a quick pass ahead. Looking for Roberts and a sliding stab there by Barron. You saw the wet turf. He kept sliding a little bit before Kieran could get in there. And nothing, nothing is our score. As Barron made a nice play there. Radford had a dead-eye shot with Dolly. Again, I'm not blaming Sivert of all. He's too good and has done it too often, but he'll tell you he should have put that one home. Ball was taken away at midfield. Nicely done by Hernandez as Edwards tried to send it ahead. Here's Hupp. Ball is sent down. Ball is out of bounds across the way. Ball knocked away. Ball played back. Nice takeaway there. Look at Sivert Dolly. And Sivert tried to send it in. Twelve twenty-five to go. Edwards plays it on the left side. And Valls now plays it to Kieran. Could this be the chance here for Roberts as he sends it in the line drive that was seeking. And Barron made a nice recovery as Radford now with eight shots to none for PC.
Ball played to Ziegler. Ziegler to Hernandez. Hernandez from right to left. And Radford clears it out of the zone. Now Pinto comes over and taps it over to Ziegler. And the ball is out of bounds. And a throw in here for Presbyterian. I want to remind you that you can visit BigSouthSports.com and stay current with everything in the Big South Conference, news, results, stats, standings, and much more. You can vote on the Utz fan poll, watch the Hardy Star plays, and enjoy video features profiling student athletes from across the conference, plus, of course, free live streaming events throughout the year on the Big South Network. Remember, it's the source for all of your conference information is BigSouthSports.com. Foul going to be called on Radford. Here's a ball that's popped up in the air, header away. And Radford trying to get there first. Walsh going to run it down. And now here's Walsh. Ball spun around. And a foul, and another whistle going to send us the other way as Presbyterian now starting to get some whistles in their favor but they still have no shots and we're under 10 minutes here in this first half I know they have to be frustrated offensively Now Radford back on their heels a little bit as we're under nine minutes. Here's a turn, and again, look how quickly Edwards comes in to tackle that ball right out of the zone. And now here comes Dolly trying to send it down. Islanders, Homer gets there, and the ball played out. Martirana with the run. Liberty has tied high point down the road. Sent down, and Presbyterian again keeping the ball with Hupp, Stephen Hupp with it. And his turn immediately picked off. There's a push. Plum and Magnarov came in, got pushed to the deck. He's still down. I think he wanted a foul. Here's Roberts, and he's called for the foul as he pushed down Ziegler. Clock will stop here with 7.08 to go.
I'll sit down the near side. And the ball out of bounds across the way is Munundi was over there trying to control it. And the ball played away as the Highlanders are just having a tough time right now. High point gets that goal right back. Are you kidding me? Really? Well, that was fast. High point able to take the lead right back after they fell by or had lost their lead to Liberty. They even things up at one. Six minutes to go. Ball sent in, Roberts lost it, a turnover. Ball turned away, and we're going back the other way, and now PC tries to send it down. They would just like to record a shot on goal. Hasn't happened yet. Five and a half minutes to go. Four fifty five to go. Andre Robinson checking in from Springfield, Virginia. Here's Valls, our X Factor of the night, Victor Valls over to Walsh. Walsh. Going to get a quick turn. Radford would like to have one late. Four and a half minutes to go. Miles York going to play it to the middle of the field to Erzin. Wyatt wearing those gloves. Over to Edwards. Edwards part of the all-freshman team in the conference. No score. Radford and PC here in the semis. Lots of scoring down the road in high point. Here's a centering pass. And a near miss there for Walsh. He had snuck in behind the defense. And Radford continues to apply the pressure. comes the, well, you saw it there, the near miss. And that's Radford missing a lot to their left, to the right of Barron. High point scored again. Is that what we got? It's three to one now? Wow. An offensive fest down the road. Here's a ball that's sent in. Ball knocked away nicely. Sliding tackle there by the Radford defense. I believe that was Walsh again. PC trying again just to muster some possession. On the Radford side of the stripe. PC sending it down the near side. And then Ziegler had it taken away immediately. Robinson and York were there. They just can't keep any possession. And we have an injured PC player down here, Robinson. Here's a ball sent in. Dolly's got it. And this time, Barron deflects it out of there. What a play by the netminder. Wow. Wow. Let's see this one more time. Dolly gets in. And there it is, a right-footed stop. It pops straight in the air. Unbelievable. So 
Here we go. The ball sent in, and Barron's going to take it on the free kick. There's a nice deep kick by Barron. 219 to go through the raindrops. Ten shots for Radford. None for the visitors from Clinton. You can't score if you don't put it on goal. Ball out of bounds. Walsh over to Erzin. And a whistle across the way were some words. Yeah, the officials jumped in quickly. Some words. Fouls not called. Minute 19 clock is stopped. Let's see what we have here as the officials are talking over. It's like cards are going to be issued. With a minute 19 to go. Let's see what happened across the way and see if we can identify the culprits. There's the tackle from behind. That's Martirana. And there's the push. Martirana gets pushed. Ido Martin and Martirana were the culprits, and it's going to be a foul on Radford and a card and free kick here for Presbyterian. Here's Roberts with a late run out, a chance for Radford. And Kieran gets bumped and no foul called. So now Radford with 20 seconds. We're going to go into the intermission. And we're going to have an interesting halftime of adjustments. First of all, for PC, are they going to be able to get any offense going? And can Radford take advantage of their opportunities? Semifinal here in the New River Valley. Nothing doing, but Radford's had... Ten shots, two good chances right in front of the net. And here we are once again, PC and Radford are tightly contested. He's ready to go to put the ball in play. PC has to create some scoring opportunities. The field has to open up for them. They have to maintain some possession, and Radford has to figure out a way to get one by Barron. As the second 45 is underway here in the semis, and we'll see how it plays out. Immediately PC. Gets it down the Radford zone. Here's a ball sent in. Mertzikot on the pickup. And they may have registered finally their first shot. Mertzikot able to get over there. And now Radford from right to left starts the other way. We'll see if there's a little sense of urgency here for RU. Strand solder down the near sideline. Oh, yeah. 
you know, PC's best chance, unless something changes and they can create something, this offense may have to rely on, you hate to say it, but you hate to the, the see a playoff game be decided with a shootout, but maybe they're figuring that's the only way they can get a shot, a good shot to score. It's at that point right now. Here's Dolly for Radford from right to left. He slipped a bit trying to dribble around Wilson. Now Max Edwards going to play it back to Comer. So Radford with a throw in across the way is nothing happening so far in the semifinal on the offensive end. You knew it was going to be a battle, though. Here's Edwards down the near side. Strand Sodder to Edwards. Jakob Strand Sodder sends it down to Roberts. And the ball's sent out. Here's Edwards. He's going to center this in. Is this the chance? Dolly got a little push in, and I believe the whistle was called. So, Dolly that time got called for the little push, trying to create some separation. So now the ball put in play by Barron. He kept this game scoreless with that terrific foot save that he made on Dolly. Oh, my goodness, a leaping effort. I think that was inadvertent contact. Yeah, there won't be a foul there. I think that was just Walsh diving high in the air and kind of got, got caught on the hip of the PC player. That's a good no call. And now PC will get a throw in. It looks like that's. Ziegler, Luca Ziegler, freshman from Germany, throwing it in. Ball crossed the way. Sent in, ball centered in, and it just missed to the left. What a chance there for PC as Mickelson just missed it to the left. They may not get a better chance than that. The centering pass very sneaky, and we'll see it once again as PC, much like the Radford dead eye shot, missed an open net. Wow, look at that. The angle was cut off nicely. You can see the frustration there as Matias runs down to the other end of the field with a big smile on his face. Corner kick for Radford as now they try to turn that momentum around on their side. Dolly trying to get position as Comer sends it down. It's headed out. Edwards going to play it back to Sivert. Well, PC finally gets a dead eye chance. Here's a long ball that's sent in wide to the right from Erzin. Six minutes gone by. And we still have no score here in the second half of this semifinal. Again, High Point took a two-goal lead in the halftime against Liberty. We'll keep you updated on that one. And a 
whistle on a foul against Radford. We'll head in the other direction for the Presbyterian College Blue Hopes. Playing Radford as they always seem to do. They allowed 21 goals this year, Radford 19. They had a plus two go uh, scoring differential in their favor. They tallied 23, Radford with 38. They doubled up their opponents, 38 to 19. Palmer plays it near side. Strandsauter, right, for trying to get on the run here. Jakob sends it down to the right side. Here's a chance. Dolly in. The shot bounces away. Barron, I believe, got enough on it once again. A defensive breakdown, and now Dolly has had three chances on Barron. Two times, I think Barron made terrific plays. Going to be a corner out of this. My goodness gracious. Well, they just dribble it in on the corner. We're going to see that shot again by Dolly, I think. And the ball out of bounds. Yeah, we got to. What are you talking about? That was dead eye ready to go in there. Oh, I got you. Wow. No score at the 37.09 mark here in the second half. Here's the shot. Dolly in. And look at that. That time it looked like it was the right hand that came down to deflect it. Three near misses for Sivert Dolly. He missed once, hit the post. Other two times, Barron who has been the star of this game on defense for PC. And that ball got out of bounds. We'll go in the other direction. Pinto tried to dribble it on the in line, but the official right there to make the call. Twelve shots to one in favor of Radford. But it doesn't matter when the scoreboard says 0-0. Zero, zero. Ball play to the near side. Roberts with it down the sideline. Out of bounds, and we'll go the other direction. Kieran lost control. You wonder if these Radford scorers are getting a little frustrated. I know Sivert's got to be frustrated with the three chances that he's had. Checking back in for PC is Clément Vanny, their freshman who had five goals this season. And Radford very quickly gets possession back. PC lost it here on the sideline. Ball poked away and stolen, and here come the Blue Hose trying to get a run. Vanny checked in, and he loses it out. We'll go in the other direction. You can tell Radford picking up a little bit of energy level. And what do we have here? A stoppage. Was there a foul? Is there a warning? It's been a very physical second half, and the official stepping in here. The referee is Kevin Broadley, Kevin Uito, and John Heeb, your officials. And yeah, there's a talking to going on, and a yellow card going to go out. To Vinny. York has it. Radford trying to maintain control. PC. There's a foul going to be called on Radford, and we may have another card issued here. Again, it's the physicality. Oh, yep, there's another card, and the officials now are just trying to regain control. Miles York getting called for the card, and 
our cameras can only pick up so much. There's a lot of yammering going on out there, a lot of physical plays, and in these conditions, the officials just don't want this thing to get out of hand, so a lot of cards are going out. PC is going to get a free kick this time. and Well, that's the way Presbyterian wants to play it. Not a strong offensive team. Very good at defending, and they're very good at frustrating Radford strikers. And you wonder now if that's just part of the game plan here from Coach Potter. Raheem Hancock, Radford's head coach, standing up with his arms crossed across the way. Here comes a free kick, a set piece, and we'll see what, if anything, PC can try to create out of this. The ball sent down, Mertzikot two-fists it right out of there. No score. DC and Radford, ball sent in. And it's popped up, Mertzikot quickly rolls it out. Here's Edwards down the near sideline. Jakob plays it to Edwards. Max Edwards over to Strandsauter. Strandsauter, Victor Valls, the X-Factor, comes in and has it taken away. Victor's really picked up his offense the last month of the season. Erzin with the steal. Here's Valls playing it to Dolly. Sivert's going to play it back to the right side. Walsh taps it over on the right wing. Sklenic. Send over, deflected out that time by Minuti. And PC will have possession. Lots of action in the first 11 and a half minutes of this semifinal, but still nothing on the scoreboard. Ball sent away. Bounding around the outside. And played out that time by Minuti. Now he wanted to make sure Radford didn't try to sneak in and get a break opportunity. PC going to try to set their defense. Radford trying to get something going offensively and a quick whistle on the throw in. The players seem to be heading back the other way. I don't know if the throw in is going to happen in a different spot. No, PC is going to have it. Still no score here on a Wednesday evening here in the New River Valley. Semifinals of the Big South Conference Tournament. Here's a header chance. Dolly, it bounced backwards, and now the ball's played back to Edwards. Edwards starts his run for Radford. Kicks on the near side. Strandsodder centers it in. Two white jerseys there, but Dolly lost his balance trying for the header. Roberts had broken to the net. Well, Kieran rares his emotions out on his sleeves, and you could tell he was a little frustrated there, as you see Barrond getting ready to put it back into play for Presbyterian. He's made a couple of dead-eye saves. He's been one of the main reasons that Ranford has not tallied a goal. Sklenic. Across the way. Again, there's a lot of pushing going on. It's very physical. It's playoff time. You know, the temperature level gets raised up a bit on both sides. Corner here for Radford. So here's a chance for Comer. Ball's in the air. The header goes backwards. Nice setup by Frazier. And another corner here on the left side. So now we'll head over on this side. Well, he had a good chance over on the far side of the field. Maybe on this side it'll be the opportunity on the set piece. Instead, it's popped up high in the air. Ball played back. Oh, and a 
contact there, and boy, oh boy, that's, uh, is that Dolly? I think it was Dolly. Thirty twenty four to go. It looks like Sivert's okay. PC plays it in. Can they do anything here offensively? And that's the story. Still three to one. High point. We're under 30 minutes, still no score. The Highlanders and the Highlanders and the Presbyterian College Blue Hopes. One goal could be it tonight. I mean, that's just what we're looking at. Could we head into another overtime session with these teams unable to do anything offensively? Last year here, it was one to nothing at Cup. Radford won an overtime. We had a one-to-one -one tie headed into the shootout last year in the playoffs between these two teams. Here it's nothing-nothing. You start to get a little tight out there the later it gets. Sometimes that can fall on the shoulders of the higher seat as well. Here's contact and a whistle and foul caught on Strandsodder. That's Garrett Glaze, who's down, and he's up now, however. <laughs> now Glaze is going to put it into play from left to right. Ball out of bounds on the near sideline. Edwards going to throw it in for Radford. Victor Valls had it taken off his foot by Adrian Ito Martin, but now Radford gains possession. Sklenic across the way, plays it over on the right side. Walsh with a play back to Sklenic. Sklenic's going to get around the defense. Can he keep it in? He does with a centering pass. But it's right there to Minuti. But PC can't keep possession. Erzin sneaks in. He's going to center it in the middle of the field. Roberts was there, couldn't get his toe on it. PC is going to send it back down. And Edwards once again going to send it to midfield to Calmer. He's going to play it over to Miles York. You know, we haven't seen Noy the Bull since he went out in the first half for Radford on defense. All freshman team member went out with that leg injury. Is Barron going to cradle that one? And PC, 15 freshmen on the roster, 13 different players scored their 23 goals. They were sixth in shots, tied for fourth in goals, fifth in assists, fourth in goals allowed, fifth in points, fourth goals against average, eighth in fouls. They don't foul a lot. They didn't have a lot of fouls in the first half. But we've had a very physical second half. PC now on the Radford end, just trying to figure out some way to get an open look. It's not easy, though, against this Radford defense. PC trying to keep some consistent possession. Vani tried to center it in. It's knocked away. And an easy steal for Radford. And there's a foul going to be called on 
Hernandez. As he tricked up Strandsider. Strandsider, all right. Stop play here quickly, and now a warning going to go to Ido Martin. No card given, just a little bit of a warning, and now we're going to start the clock again once the ball is put into play. Here's Roberts, and then there's the frustration. We talked about Kieran wearing his emotions on his sleeve. Well, he's been frustrated tonight, and he just kind of let it loose on that one. Martirana back in, Robinson back in for Radford. Stephen Hupp into the matchup for Presbyterian is... Barron going to send this into play. Andre Robinson spins away from the defense. Robinson, nice dribbling, gets behind the defense, and what a sliding tackle. Wow. Terrific defensive recovery that time for PC. I think it was Hernandez. No, it was Glaze, Garrett Glaze with the tackle. He had to gamble because Robinson had gotten behind the defense. Now the ball sent down. You see trying to get something going here. They're onside. Here's Hupp, ball that's sent in. Headed out. And now Edwards running well for Radford from right to left. Yeah, we'll see that great play here. I think it was Glaze from our vantage point atop the Cup Stadium. Wait, but here's a quick shot by Walsh. It's in to the left side. He just missed. Wow. He was in onside, and he let it fly to the left. Another near scoring opportunity for Radford. They let get by. Now we're going to have a couple of nice highlights to show you. First of all, here is Walsh coming in, and in one motion, I mean, that's a perfect shot just to the left, to the right of Breland, to the left of the net. And then Glaze is going to get in when Robinson makes the steal. And he's in there alone. You're going to see this right here. Watch this tackle. And it's completely legal the way he went in from the side. There you go. Did not undercut him and kept that ball on his foot. That's one of the better defensive plays you're going to see right there for Blake. And the official was right there to indicate that he went in with the side angle. We approach 23 minutes. A lot of action for a nil-nil result right now. Here comes Radford once again. Martirana showing speed. It's quickly turned the other way for Presbyterian. Hernandez plays it. Over in front of the Radford bench, Radford bench standing. Ball out of bounds, a throw in for the Highlanders. Again, Radford's energy level really starting to pick up. Contact at midfield. PC is going to hang on to it, play down the left side. York's going to get there, though. He easily outran Ziegler. And now here we start the other way. Dolly plays it in the middle. Victor Valls with a nice pass down the right side. Opportunity perhaps shot in, and it was just off the back of the hands of Barron and over the net. Radford keeping the pressure on. Another corner kick for Radford. Is this the set piece that finally results into a goal? As Strandsauter will put it into play. Low line drive. The header will bounce in out to the left, but Strandsauter is going to keep it in the zone. That ball is going to deflect off of Hernandez out of bounds and a throw in for Radford. Strandsauter tosses it in to Robinson. Good battle down here in the corner. Robinson, Edwards. 
Strand Sodder. Here's a centering pass and a good read by Barron. He was communicating with his back line that it was going to run up to make that barehanded catch. We approach 21 minutes left in regulation. Still no score here in the semifinal from Cup Stadium. Edwards down the near side to Strand Sodder. Strand Sodder had it taken off his foot by Glaze and TC trying to mount some possession. Ball played to the near side. Glaze unable to get there. And that's a turnover right back to Radford. Well, Devalu was wanting to start up the pitch and he never could get the ball back. Radford team, five different players with five assists or more on the season. So they've got some versatility, and there's a whistle and a foul. So now here is a free kick coming. They get the ball in on the left side. Ball is in and tapped away by Mertzikot. At the last second, Mertzikot got his hands up. The second dead-eye opportunity for PC in this half. They'll now have a corner kick. And you're going to see it across the way. Zivanovic got in, and Mertzikat just able to push that over to the left side. <laughs> Dolly returns for Radford. Here's the corner for PC. Low line drive, and it bounces out to the right. And it'll be, I believe, another corner on this side. We've had a ton of action here in this second session. And now we come down here to the right side, the lower right side of the field from our vantage point, and PC will set up the same formation just to the left side of the scoring box. Ito Martin going to put it into play. Low line drive, and Radford does not allow it to get through. Ito Martin. Curveball sent in to Mertzikot, and he makes the play. It feels like PC's got more than two shots up on the scoreboard, it says. You know, it seems like they've gotten at least four or five. I'm not sure the scoreboard's accurate with their shots, but nonetheless, we have goose eggs where it matters the most, and that's on the scoreboard. What is it about this matchup that's so hard for Radford? That high-flying offense just can't get much going against this Presbyterian defense. The offensively challenged Blue Hose spend a lot of time defending, and they are very, very skilled at it, as are the Highlanders. 18 minutes left. Colmer, right in the middle of the field, going to send this down. Walsh on the deflection, tried to streak in. Ball kind of hanging around the box on the right side. Here's Edwards. Max starts his charge up the field. Robinson here on the left side. He's going to send this around the defense. He centers it up, but it's intercepted by Hupp. What a matchup here from Cup. The Highlanders and the Blue Hose. There's Robinson down the near side. Nothing but blue in front of him. He wants to play it back now. Erzin with those black gloves on. Over to Victor Valls. Victor. Tied for second in the conference, and assist. Roberts shot doesn't get through the sea of blue in front of him. Quick throw in on the far side. Nicely done by Sklenik. 16.40 to go. Ball sent in. Barron heads it out now. This is Dolly. Ball not out of the zone. Robinson trying to run this down before it goes out of bounds. He will. Edwards now comes to get it. 
Edwards plays it over to Robinson. Robinson, the left footer, deflects right there off of Michael Wilson, one of their freshmen. And now the Highlanders with another opportunity here on a corner. Well, during our open, we talked about how one goal could be the deciding factor here tonight. And it looks like it's setting up exactly that way. So here we go, Frazier Comer. Going to send the low line drive in, and Barron saw it, made the play on the side of the net. Not where Frazier wanted to put that. When we saw Radford practice yesterday, they really worked on their corner kicks. Ball sent out of bounds, and Radford will have a throw in. Fifteen and a half minutes. No score between Radford and Presbyterian. High point up three to one. Down the road in North Carolina over Liberty. That's the top seed, the high point Panthers. Sklenic going to replace Robinson Strandsodder for Radford as well. Edwards on the near side. McCawson. And a whistle and a foul against Radford is hitting the deck was Devalier. A little bit of push in there, huh? Edwards and Devalier. Again, it's physical. Edo Martin will play this on the free kick, either he or Ziegler. Let's see how it all plays out here. They've got two players there. You're not sure what way they will do this. Looks like it's going to be Ziegler. Line drive is in. PC sends it high and out of play over the net. That was Ricardo Hernandez. But it deflected off of Radford? No. So here we go now. Corner kick for Presbyterian. So at the 14 minute mark, a set piece here for PC. So here we go, low line drive sent in, header away and it bounced right there in front. <laughs> and how about Victor Valls? Just standing there, looked down, he's about, I don't know, Six inches from the goal line, and he just decided to calmly play it off his foot and kick it down the field. But that was the best corner opportunity that PC has had. Ball being headed both ways right now. This ball sent in over the net by Devalier. Let's watch this ball come in here from the corner. Now watch Vall standing over there beside Mertzikon on there. Look at him. He's just right there, right off his chest. Look how close he is to the goal line. Victor Vall's <laughs> showing a lot of cool where a lot of kids may have panicked in that situation. 12.50. Looky what I found here two inches away from my goal line. I better kick this back the other way. Twelve thirty-five to go in regulation here at Cup in the semifinals. Garrett Glaze plays it on the near side. Edwards, it's headed high in the air. A lot of uncertainty is what PC wants to do when they do have possession. Hernandez just kind of held the ball. A lot of that could be their youth, but then again, you know, all these freshmen this late in the season aren't really freshmen anymore. Ball bounding around. PC trying to keep it in. Ball popped up in the air. Hernandez lost control. Strandsider plays it down. Edwards looking for Dolly. Sivert going to boot it back down to Comer. Again, we appreciate Kyle Galander for joining us here on the broadcast in the first half. Good insight about the state of college affairs, especially with men's college basketball. 
A lot of issues in men's college hoops. PC trying to mount an attack here. But very quickly, Miles York, who's had a sensational season, makes the play. Balls with the pass over on the right side. Tackle made, no whistle. Now a late whistle is. Here come the Highlanders with a play opportunity on a free kick with 11 minutes to go. Evan Sklenick hit the deck hard, but now the Highlanders with a chance. So it looks like slow getting up. Presbyterian, Zivanovich. You're getting late in regulation. It's been very physical. There's the tackle. Yeah, see, that one wasn't from the side. That was from behind, and there you see the reason, the difference in that and the, the glazed tackle on Robinson earlier. So here you go, Radford with a free kick. Obviously, Kieran Roberts is the guy you want. And this could be the pivotal moment of this semifinal. Roberts in, line drive, and it's stopped by Barron. A sliding tackle. He had really shut down the angle. They're going to get a corner out of this, but Barron has just been spectacular in goal here tonight. Corner kick for Radford. Comer very quickly has the ball down. High bend to this one, but it sails over the offense. Edwards on the near side. Crossing over, sends it in. The header is out. Edwards once again trying to regain all freshman team member doing some fancy dribbling on the near side. Here's Vols. Erzin going to send it in. Sklenic turns. Victor Vols finds Edwards. Edwards got a defender in front of him. Edwards. Look at this Presbyterian defense, how quickly they close on the ball. And that ball will deflect out. Miller. Bell going to try to maintain possession. Hernandez plays it down, but he'll turn it over. We're under nine minutes. Nothing, nothing. Far sideline, ball knocked away. It'll stay with Radford. Eight twenty to go. Temperatures now. Let's see here. We are started out at. 42 degrees, that's where we are right now. Things haven't really changed. Eight minutes left, Edwards. Strand Sodder for Radford. 18 shots according to the scoreboard for Radford, five for Presbyterian. And a nice back kick here as Presbyterian trying to run out. Here's Pinto, he's one of those guys who can score. He had three of them during the regular season, three goals, but. He lost it to Radford's defense. Ball played over on the left side. Pass it sent in, deflected out by Colmer. Ball bounds away, and now here is Dolly looking for Roberts down the far side. They've been the two superstars all year. Roberts trying to get free. Kieran, only one assist all season. Quick turn by PC. They don't really have numbers, but they had a little bit of an open space. But very quickly, the ball just kicked right onto the toe of Frazier Comer. That's why he's the co-defensive player of the year. We're under seven minutes here in regulation. Semi-finals. Victor Valls. Hernandez did a nice job to sneak in. Now Erzin plays it for Radford. You can really just sense the urgency for RU. Six and a half to go.
Ball sent down, and Barron will make the pickup. Well, obviously, if there's no scoring, we'll have the two overtime 10-minute periods, if necessary, for the second one. And then, if nothing happens, we could have a second straight year of a shootout decide the semis. And you hate to see it come down to that. Look at Dolly, some fancy dribbling and a foul called on Presbyterian with 5.45 to go. Homer splits the defense. Or Sklenic checked that. Evan. Dolly with his back over to Valls. Victor Valls. Nice play. Yeah, Strand Sauter. Can he run it down? He cannot. And we'll go the other way. Nice idea by Victor. As we approach five minutes. Four fifty to go. Ball on the far side. PC pokes it out of bounds. Minuti. Ball played back. Here's Edwards down the near side. Strand Sodder. Played back. Dolly sent in by Roberts, but it's right there. Not much on that when Barron made the pickup. Not a lot of momentum behind that one for Kieran as Barron has just been Johnny on the spot all night long. As we're under four minutes to go here in regulation. Three twenty-nine left, and another throw in for Radford across the way. Martirana going to return. Sklenic out for Radford. What's the latest check down in High Point? How much time? Can't be much time left in that one either. Three to one, High Point. Looks like they're going to advance to Championship Sunday, which would mean that's where the championship matchup would be. Twelve minutes to go down in high point. Three to one, Panthers. And that's going to be a push. Yep, that's a foul on Victor Valls. With 2.43 to go, Valls with a foul. Clément Vigny and a yellow card coming out for Valls. Well, they've been giving out the cards quite frequently to try to tighten things up here. So now a free kick for Presbyterian, 243. Here's where if you're Radford, you have to watch out for a, a bad hop. Here's the send in. Quickly booted away. Two thirty five to go. Throw in for the Blue Hose. Ball sent down, but right to Comer. They just don't have a lot of finishing players. You know, they don't have a lot of guys who can get behind the defense or set up 
strikers. That's one thing you, when you watch them play. They need a lot of open field and a mistake here and there. Here's a ball sent down, crossover pass right in the middle of the field. See there, they try to take it in and right against the defense, near turnover. Savanovich lost the handle. Here's Glaze. Ball here on the right side. There's a bender that's sent in. Mertzikot mistimed his jump, but he was able to get enough on it to poke it away. They had sent Minuti in there. PC able to keep it on their foot. Glaze here on the right side. McCawson can't hang on to it. And we'll go back the other way. Edo Martin. Ball played down the far side. One minute in regulation. PC trying to get a handle. It goes out to whom? It's going to go back to Radford. And it looks like we're going to go into a 10-minute overtime period of nothing, nothing, 90 minutes under our belts. Edwards trying to get something going in the final 40. Strandsider, 35. Strandsider going to center it. They got in the way of one another there. Glaze with 30 seconds pops it high in the air and it's a miscommunication. Barron was ready to make the play. 20 seconds. Can Radford get a shot off here at the end? No, they turn it over. And that will assure us overtime on the pitch here at Cup Stadium in the semifinals, as was the case last year. We're doing it all over again in 2017. It's time for extra soccer. <laughs> Overtime number one after this. Five straight overtime matches between these two schools. Seventh overtime period, counting all the doubles. Radford from left to right here in the OT, and PC from right to left. 19 shots to six in favor of Radford. Ball popped up the other way. Will someone come away with a golden goal before we have to head into potentially, unfortunately, a playoff decided by a shootout and offside the call against Presbyterian. know those are the rules in place, but again, you hate to see any matchup decided with the shootout, but that's what we have as part of the rules. Kyle Kalander even could remember a time where that wasn't the case in soccer, but if not, you may be playing until the wee hours, too. There's the other side of it. Sklenic down the near side. Radford trying to get some momentum early in OT. He took it right through the wickets that time of Ziegler. Controls it back. Balls with a little tap past the Walsh, back to Sklenic. Evan going to send this in. He's got Kieran there. The header deflects off of Dolly, and he was offside. Wow. Still nothing but goose eggs up here in the OT. Is High Point a final? Do we know? Not yet. Still three to one. High Point very, very late against Liberty. So High Point looks like they're going to advance and host Championship Sunday. Radford gets a break on the other side. Ball centered. Sklenic in. Evan plays it over on the left side. Radford sends it across, and Roberts trying to run it down before they lose possession. And here's a playback. Here's Walsh. York to Walsh. York sends it over. 
Ball popped up in the air. The header goes the other way. Nearly three minutes gone by in our first overtime. Still no score. Balls plays it over to the left side. York centers to Sklenic. Sklenic, quick turn, looking for Walsh. He's got him over here on the right corner. Michael sends it in. And Roberts and Dolly sitting there waiting for the header, but the chance never came. Victor Valls once again though tries to find Walsh. It's deflected away by PC. Boy, Radford keeping this in. And we go the other way. The deflection went off of the Highlanders. So PC finally able to get the pressure off with a kick out of bounds. And you, like I said, back early moments of the second half for them, you almost figure they like their chances in a shootout because they just don't get many offensive opportunities. Can they get it to a shootout? Here's Edwards in the middle of the field for Radford. He's got Strandsaw to the far left. Instead, he plays it to the right with Vols. Victor sends it over the net. Boy, Victor, not much of a chance there. Five forty-five to go. Here in overtime, number one to the Big South Conference semifinals. It's everything really we thought it was going to be. We knew it was going to be low scoring. We knew it was going to be very difficult for Radford to maintain any offense against this defense. PC is just a difficult matchup for Radford. And obviously Radford takes pride in its defense as well. I mentioned they three straight years they've had defensive player of the year or co-defensive player of the year. Here's a front kick for PC. Ball sent over to the right side. Battle over there. McCawson loses it. And then ball lost out of bounds by Dolly. So High Point has won. The top seed will host the championship either against Radford or PC on Sunday at 2. Miller Bell into the matchup for Presbyterian College Blue Hose with 4.35 to go in OT, and the ball lost out of bounds. Radford throws it in quickly. Centering pass, Dolly trying to get it over to Sklenic. Instead, it's intercepted by Presbyterian. And they're just trying to send this thing down and hope for an extra bounce, something, a breakaway, something that will give them an opportunity. 21 shots to six. They've been outshot by 15, but Radford unable to find the back of the net. Chances have been limited. Quick throw in here. Comer going to come over and play it for Radford. Homer sends it down to the right side. Quick send out by Ziegler. Walsh plays it on the near side, and Sklenic going to lose it, they say, back the other way. So Presbyterian able to deaden that ball on the sidelines. Ball sent down the near pitch, and it's knocked away. Where is it? Where is it? Walsh finds it. Ball bounding around, sent back down. And now a chance here for Dolly. Dolly plays at the Vols. Radford trying to get a run going here. Dolly sends it ahead. Roberts can't get free. Under three minutes of overtime number one. Presbyterian turns it over. Radford has dominated possession here in the overtime. Nice dribble in by Strand Sodder. Jakob over to Sklenic, back kick over to Valls. Victor in, shoots, it's deflected high in the air. Victor Valls nearly got that one through. Here's Walsh, he's got a nice centering pass, and Barron is there to make the play. He rolls it out very quickly, smart play by Barron as they try to get numbers with Radford all backed into their scoring zone. 
PC trying with the run out. Radford's defense quickly collapsed. Roberts came in to take it away. Ball hit down the near side to Ziegler. Ziegler over on the right side, sends it. Minuti. Ido Martin with it. Just kind of fires it down. Ball is by contact. And a foul going to be called finally is Mertzikot. Miller Bell charged in with a minute 45 to go. Time going to be stopped. Miles York is down. Here's the shot. It was a late whistle. Yeah, I mean, could have gone either way. Call made. I think it's a good call, not a bad call. Could have, but you could have let it go as well, and you could have been okay with it either way. So, Mertzikot from left to right here. Shots at 22 to 6 as Nicholas will send it out. Ball bounds around, and Radford trying to mount it late here in the first OT. Evan Sklenik down the middle. Sklenik trying to get by that last line. Walsh trying to keep it alive, and it's intercepted by Zavonovic. Jakob Strandsider's got it. He's got Dolly in the middle. He's got Roberts in the middle. And Karen mistimed his jump, and very quickly, the deflection is sent away and down the pitch. Good run there by Colmer. Miller Bell nearly broke away as we're under a minute here in overtime number one. Pinto. Turns it for Radford. He's been quiet tonight offensively. 45 seconds. PC trying to mount some possession. Hernandez with it. Hernandez plays it ahead. Miller Bell can't get it through. The deflection, and it goes off to the left. A near miss there. No call. They were calling for the foul. That was McCawson and then Miller Bell with 25 ticks. And we're going to be headed into... A scoreless double overtime, it appears. Let's just ball come out. Miller Bell was there. McCawson sends it in and out to the left. Not much on that one. Ten seconds. So we're going to a second overtime here in the semifinals for the second straight year. The only difference is last year's was one-to-one. -one. This one, nothing-nothing. Overtime number two on the pitch at Cup after this. They were all headed down to the bleachers on the field so they can cheer on the team louder here during the OT as the actual mist had picked up there for a while during the break. Temperatures now in the upper 30s. Why not? Semi-final Wednesday here. Double OT, Radford and Presbyterian. High Point has advanced to Championship Sunday. Congratulations to the Panthers. Hernandez plays it down the right side. McCawson, centering pass. Here's Pinto. Pinto unable to get it on over to Hernandez. Again, they just can't keep the ball. Glaze, he comes out of there with it, sends one in, and Merzikot is there. Sometimes it seems like their best offense in their mind is just to send one from about five or ten feet behind the scoring box toward the opposing goal, and maybe you get a misplay, and maybe you get a deflection. Minute gone by here in double OT as Radford from right to left turns it over. Edwards tried to get it over to Strandsaw. Edwards heads it back. Carlson missed the header for Presbyterian. Well, at this point, unless there's a mistake made, you're going to have, for the second straight year, a shootout decide the semifinals at Cup. Man down for PC, and that's Ricardo Hernandez. Karen 
Roberts did a nice job to shield McCawson from that ball here on the sideline. Two minutes gone by in the second overtime. Here's Pinto in the middle of the field. Trying for some room to roam. Sergio Pinto plays it out to the left. BC trying to get a shot off here. Centering pass in. Merzikot there to knock it down. Nice play by Nicholas. Saw him hustle after that ball deflected off his chest. Every play now so much more vitally important. These goalies could potentially be tested to the nth degree coming up in a shootout. Edwards, Strand Sauter, Radford trying to get something going. They send the ball to the other side. Walsh slipped trying to make the turn. And Presbyterian will have a throw in over on the far side. Luca Ziegler, one of those 15 freshmen on that Presbyterian roster with the throw in. And now Radford's going to get it back. Clock stop, 6.57, delay a game over. They threw the ball, took the ball away from Radford's sideline. Quick turn. And the ball goes out of bounds, but PC is going to have a throw in. Radford and Presbyterian. Blue Hose lost here in overtime last year. Then we had double OT at Cup in the semis. Radford won in a shootout 4 to 2. Overtime tie the first time this year. 1 to 1 down in Clinton. Edwards down the near side to Strandsauter. Jakob gets tied up. Strandsauter trying to bounce away from. Royal Blue defender, that time Ido Martin. Here's Roberts. He's been very quiet tonight. Kieran, the attacking player of the year in the middle of the field. Centers, and it's blocked away. The deflection blocked again. Are you kidding me? Connor Barrett, the superstar between the pipes. And you won't see two better stops in a pressure situation by any goalie ever than we just saw. Quick throw in on the near side. We'll see those here coming up on the replays. Wow. Centering ball once again, deflects out beyond the scoring box, but Radford keeps it in the zone. Barron has been sensational here tonight. He might have to be sensational in a shootout too. Here's Sklenic. Sklenic crosses over. Radford keeping the pressure on. Sklenic trying to split the defense, and he has the ball taken away by Hernandez. Well, now we get a chance to see those stops by Barron here as he's going to play this ball back in. And then Kieran Roberts got it started. He's going to just kind of fill his way through the defense turn. There's the first one. Then the deflection. And why not Dolly? The top two scorers on Radford. And Barron, a brick wall between the pipes. 4.35 to go. Here's a quick turn by PC. Ball deflected out, turned the other way. And here on the near sideline, ball goes out of bounds back to Radford. 4.15 to go. Here in double overtime. High point awaits the winner. Roberts over on the far side. Nice play by Sklenic. Sklenic tries the center. It's deflected away and a corner kick coming up with 3.50 to go. The corner set piece. Could this be the winner finally for Radford? Calmer over to play it. Frazier sends it in and a header is going to go off to the left side. York's going to run it down and it's out of bounds. Possession to Radford. Another corner coming up on the lower side here for RU. 
Comer comes over to play it for Radford. They're all lined up to the right corner of the box. Comer sends it in, and it's pushed out by Barron. Barron has been sensational. 24 shots. Here's another long ball sent in, and York had gotten in behind the defense, but he couldn't quite get any kind of foot control on that. Well, I'll tell you what, the senior netminder, Connor Barron, win or lose, is going to have to be lifted up by his teammates in this one. He has been sensational as he puts this back into play. And you wonder how that would play into a shootout. Now, he's had to pay attention to a lot of shots, whereas Mertzikot has not for Radford. Here's Sklenic trying to make it a moot point on a late run, but it's poked away in another corner. PC trying to withstand these Radford corner kicks. Here late in the second overtime of the semifinals, Radford looking for a, gobble, a, a golden goal here in the double OT. Calmer. The bend off of that left foot, line drive. Barron got in there, poked it away, and it's sent out by Presbyterian. Ball was misplayed, Mertzikot. They're out of goal so far, and boy, a near misplay cost Radford there. Mertzikot came out, that deflection almost stayed with PC, and that would have been an empty net opportunity. That's what I was talking about, a bad deflection that can cost you your season. As it is, no harm, no foul. And with a minute 30 to go, it's looking more and more like it's going to be a scoreless overtime shootout to decide who will join High Point in Championship Sunday. Here's a shot that's sent in. York plays it back. PC trying to get a late turn as now we have a minute to go. Foul on Radford as we're under a minute. You see Presbyterian, no sense of urgency here. They figure they're going to have this shot. 50 seconds to go. They're going to set everybody up. So here's your chance to avoid, if you're PC, the shootout. 38 seconds, a free kick coming for the Blue Hose. taking their time. They've got plenty of time to set this up. And here's the shot in deep and Mertzikot, whoa, he was backpedaling and had to fist that over the net. And ladies and gentlemen, with 15 seconds as we have a corner kick coming up, is PC, they're going to have a chance here. 10 seconds. Ito Martin going to send it in. We're under 10 seconds. The header pops up in the air with four, with three with two, and we're going to a shootout here to decide this semifinal for the second straight year. Nothing doing through two overtimes, and now we'll set up the <laughs> Trying to get a look and make sure we get the shot here of this first. Can we get a shot of the first shooter here? No, we don't need the midfield. I believe it's Miller Bell. Nope, it's going to be the freshman who made the all-conference freshman team, Clement Vanny. Vanny against Mertzica. So the forward going to come in. Vanny, a member of the all-freshman team. First attempt here in the shootout. Officials making sure the ball lined up correctly. So, Vanny against Mertzikot. Vanny sends it in, and he gets it by Mertzikot. And Presbyterian has a 1-0 lead in the shootout. But now, the Highlander is going to send down Frazier Comer. So now Comer tries to even it up here. Fairly easy for 
Clément Vanny, and now Comer against Barron. Comer in on Barron, sends it in, and he scores. And we're even at one. And both goalies look like they were completely overmatched on that one, and now Mertz cut back between the pipes. And I believe this is Matthias McCawson. It is. So now McCawson with the second Presbyterian shot. One to one in the shootout. McCawson. In on Merzikot, sends it in, and he gets it by. Merzikot dove to his right. So it's now 2-1, to one, PC. And now for Radford, Jakob Strandsauter. So Strandsauter, the junior, tries to make this a 2-2 two to two shootout. Barron awaits, Strandsider in, the shot, and Barron can't make the stop. And really for the goalie, all you can do is guess and hope you guess right. We're tied at two. So the third shot coming up here for Presbyterian is their next striker making their way out. And it looks like it's Jacob Lutke who didn't get much run here tonight, Lukey. One goal this season, nine shots. So Lukey taking the third shot here in the shootout for PC. We're tied at two. Lukey gets the whistle. Sent in, and he gets it over the head of Mertzikot, and it's three to two. And really, so far, all five shots have went in fairly easily. And now you get into the three best strikers for Radford. And here is Victor Valls. Victor this season. Two goals for Radford. He tries to tie the shootout at three against Barron. Balls in, and again, very easily done. Barron has been guessing to the right, and Radford has went to the left. That was a wide open net, so it was very easy for Vols, and we're even at three. So now the shootout is at 3-3. And now here's Adrian Ito Martin. Adrian Ito Martin. Jakob Strandsauter, Colmer, Jakob Strandsauter, and then Ball for Radford. And now here's Ito Martin trying to make it a 4-3 lead in the shootout. And he does. Again, all seven of these shots. Again, this is just a difficult way to decide who's going to play in a championship. And now here's Wyatt Erzin. Wyatt Erzin going to take it. The sophomore from Arizona. It's four to three. Connor Barron's been guessing to his right, and he's guessed wrong every time. Erzin sends it in, and the stop that time made by Barron. And now Presbyterian can win it right here. Erzin is stopped, and now it comes down to this shot that could end up being the match. I think that's Hernandez. It is. It is Ricardo Hernandez. The stop made by Barron, and now Hernandez has a berth into the championship on his toe. Mertzikot. If this is in, PC is in. If not, Radford with a chance. Hernandez sends it in, and Presbyterian has defeated Radford in the shootout. They get 
revenge on last season when Radford defeated them 4-2. to two. And the Presbyterian College Blue Hose, the number six seed, has come in and upset number two seed at Radford on the pitch here at Cup, five to three in the shootout. Presbyterian will head to High Point for championship Sunday at two o'clock. I made the mention early in the second half that PC may actually be playing for the shootout. It's their best chance to kind of string together some offense. And Nicholas Mertzikot just sits in net. Nicholas Mertzikot so distraught being picked up on here by the 